let's just jump right into the drama triangle. Could you give us an overview of what it is and how you might use it? Okay, so Cartman says, many of us got trained to live in a state of victimhood. And there are three unique flavors of victimhood in the drama triangle. We call them bases. So the first base is the pure victim. And the pure victim, you know, it's so hard here. I'm trying. I don't know. It's just any kind of a... Oh, help. You know, it's got this very (laughs) disempowered feeling. And it's somehow like they've got the power. Somebody else has it, not me. And I'm very at the effect of things. So I could be at the effect of my bank account, at the effect of this email that just came in, at the effect of the traffic, at the effect of the new policy on going back to work, at the effect of COVID. All those things are forms of being a victim. Then the next role in the drama triangle is the villain, and the villain's job is to blame. So I can blame me. God, I should have known that, or I should have been more prepared, or any should have over here on me, or I'm not smart enough, or I can't count on myself. That's all villaining toward myself. Or we can villain toward another. You know, you, you're the reason why I'm not having as much fun as I could be having. Or we could be a villain to a group of people, which is very popular in our culture. So we all know who's screwing it up for the rest of us. You know, it's that group over there and everybody's pointing to particular groups who are the bad guys. So villain's very popular because it gets our adrenaline really kicking in. I think it's actually in the terms of service on Twitter that you have to play that role when you <laughs> use the service. Anyway, it's a side note. Please. Right, <laughs> right. Who's, who's, who's screwing it up? Who's wrong? Yeah, you don't know. You're wrong. I'm right. And then the last role in the drama triangle is the hero. It's also called the reliever or the rescuer. And the hero's job is to seek temporary relief. So oh my God, I had such a hard day today at work. Let me come home. I'm going to drink my alcohol or go my, do my gaming or get lost in Netflix or whatever I'm going to do to give myself some temporary relief. And it works, but I got to do it again tomorrow because tomorrow I'm going to come home, potentially burn out again, and then I'm going to have to do the same pattern. So heroing is temporary relief over and over again. So I can hero myself. I could hero another, you know, oh, you look like you're struggling at work and um, let me take over some of your work that you're doing. And I might do that. I could do that from a place of real presence. But when I'm a hero doing it, I'm actually creating some codependence where I keep needing you to not be able to handle your work so I can keep helping. And then I'll resent you over time. Mm-hmm. And then we can hero them. You know, there's a lots of philanthropies, especially in the past, they're getting better at this now where we just throw a bunch of money at a population. And then next year they have all the same issues and they need more money and nothing ever really changes. So The key thing is temporary relief. So we all know the story about you can give the man a fish every night or you could teach him to fish for himself. So the hero gives the man the fish night after night after night. Mm -hmm. And if you're off the drama triangle, you shift to a place where you see people as empowered and the hero asks good questions to help people get more effective around them. So my my next question, I want to share an observation from my rereading of the book. And then the the next question, just to plant the seed, is I'm going to ask you why it's called the drama triangle, what drama actually means here. But in my reread, uh, which I'm in the middle of right now, of the 15 Commitments of Conscious Leadership, which was recommended to me by Dustin, uh, and I think it was also recommended in my last book, and Tribe of Mentors by Dustin. And there's a section that I needed to reread, which was related to the drama triangle. And it pointed out that the villain could take the form of someone in a meeting who to try to resolve conflict, or maybe not resolve, to try to minimize conflict always takes the blame. Like eventually at the end of the meeting, they just say, you know what? It's my fault. I should have done this, 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 and this. And it's easy, at least for me, to conflate radical responsibility with overly blaming myself for everything. And I I don't actually have a great way to approach navigating, discerning those two for me, if that makes any sense. Uh, So so we could we could try to unpack that or we could jump to why it's called the drama triangle but I'll let you choose the direction. Well, let me do both. So the reason why it's tr- called the drama triangle is because 
the whole triangle is set up for a na na na. You know, it's I'm right, you're wrong, you're to blame, or I'm to blame. It's it's not asking everybody to really take a hundred percent responsibility for how they're co-creating experiences. So if I'm in the drama triangle, the villain, if I'm taking on I'm more responsible, what happens is I'll say, Oh, I'm here at the meeting, you guys, and look, it's my fault. I'll take some of your responsibility and take it all on me. And so there is a place to say, hey, I have a part in how I've co-created this. Let me tell you my part. That would be me taking my 100%. And then I would also know that everybody else has a part to play too. So I'm not taking on their responsibility as well. That's the difference between a villain and somebody who's, who's just simply acknowledging I have a role to play here.